Me and horror don't really go together. I am and have always been a total scaredy cat. And that goes double for the world of video games. The scariest game I played as a kid was Luigi's Mansion, and even then, that was still pretty intense for baby Fofi. And as an adult, I chickened out a Resident Evil 7 VR before the tutorial even started. Legit, I was just standing in an empty room and I was too scared to press start. So yeah, Fofi and scary, they don't mix. But every now and then, a morbid curiosity sinks in. Sometimes a scary game comes along that, for one reason or another, piques my interest. And sometimes a horror game gets so immensely big that you just can't ignore it. So today, we're talking FNAF. Five Nights at Freddy's, a horror game series that dominated the YouTube gaming scene in the mid 2010s and is still pretty dang prominent today. It's all about evil Chuck E. Cheese animatronics, haunted pizza places, and... oh... uh... Child murder, okay. Sounds like the perfect thing to merchandise to kids and sell in your local Walmart. Aw, look at this cute little plushie of a rusty metal animatronic haunted by the soul of a child whose head was bitten by a robot in 1987. Happy birthday, Tommy. Nice. FNAF 1 came out in August of 2014. You play as a security guard working the night shift at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, where the animatronics like to roam the halls at night. Because if they didn't roam the halls at night, there would be no game. You check security cameras and closed doors to keep them from getting to you, but if you fail, yeah that. The game was a huge hit, sparked a massive franchise backed by billions of views on YouTube, and today, FNAF is freaking unstoppable. And my experiences with the series are pretty unique, I think. See, some of you may or may not know that I used to work really closely with a channel here on YouTube called The Game Theorists. You know, game theory, map pad, Mario is mental, but hey, that's just a theory and all that. I was an editor and host on the channel for several years, and I still do stuff with them today. I mean, heck, they just launched a whole new channel called Food Theory with a theme song written and recorded by me. Matt really let me go full Oingo Boingo on it, and I love him for that. But Anyway, I joined the Theorist team in the summer of 2014 and was one of three editors. So naturally, I didn't work on every single game theory that came out. Sometimes episodes were uploaded that I didn't even know were happening. And after a few months, in October of 2014, Matt put out a new episode of Game Theory all about some game called Five Nights at Freddy's. Now, I wasn't super familiar with the game, but this wasn't the first time I'd ever heard of FNAF. I think I'd seen the Game Grums play it before this, and of course, the game freaked me out so much I couldn't even watch the whole video. 10 minutes of FNAF was too much for me at the start. But there was just something about the game that interested me, while also making me never want to look at it again. The idea was just so unique, and the characters were so colorfully horrifying. I'd never seen anything like it. So I was actually really excited to see Matt tackling the game. And it was a really interesting video, but ultimately, at the time, I just saw it as another fun game theory on a cool game. I was not aware of the snowball that was about to build up. But then, less than a month later, I get an email from Matt with a new game theory editing project, Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Wait, didn't the first game just come out like a week ago? And I was, uh... And nervous. Besides the first theory episode, I had never managed to make it through any FNAF Let's Plays or videos because the game freaked me out too much. Now I had to spend two weeks straight editing a 17 minute long video on the newest and scariest FNAF game all by myself. I had to live in that world for the next few weeks and not gonna lie, I was sweating a bit. I sound like a little kid saying all this, but seriously, I had zero experience with horror at the time. And let me tell you, Editing the FNAF 2 game theory was one of the most stressful things I've ever done. Oh, not because of the scary robot bunnies. I got over that pretty fast. And not because of the deadline either. Two weeks to edit one video is actually a pretty decent amount of time. I've edited videos of my own way longer than that in like one week. No, it was all because of me and my stupid $50 editing program that I insisted on sticking with back then. I had been dealing with this program's bullcrap for years, but this thing just could not handle the awesome magnitude of the Five Nights at Freddy's 2 game theory because it just kept crapping itself over and over. It crashed constantly. Even after I had the entire video done, I had to take an entire extra day just to export because it just kept 
crashing. By the end of the project, I was so done with my computer that a real life Freddy Fazbear could have appeared in my doorway and I wouldn't have cared. I was completely desensitized to all the jump scares and crazy eyed chickens. I just wanted to make a video without something breaking for once, but it didn't matter. The FNAF 2 game theory was done. And I was done with that editing software. And you might expect that after all that hassle, I'd never want to see any of these animatronic nightmares again. But honestly, ever since that game theory, I've had a real fondness for these murderous rust buckets. We went through so much together, and I'm still really proud of that video. I helped out on one or two other FNAF-related game theories, and I still love whenever Matt hops back into the series. I am a staunch FNAF defender. I've always really dug these games, and I adore all the crazy animatronic designs. When Funko launched their series of FNAF action figures, I jumped on that mess immediately. Plushies? Yes, please. Neon versions of all the exact same toys? Even better! I will not hide the fact that I love Five Nights at Freddy's. But at the same time, I get it. I totally get it. People got really burnt out on these games and for completely understandable reasons. FNAF 2 came out only four months after the first, then was quickly followed by FNAF 3 only five months later, then FNAF 4 came out five months after that. They really put out four whole games in less than a year. And that is a lot of FNAF. The games did not get any room to breathe and they were all just way too similar. I legit forget FNAF 3 and 4 even exist a lot of the time. In fact, I'm just gonna say it, FNAF 3, worst one of the bunch. Only one real animatronic, its jump scare is a joke, everything looks like pee, it's just nowhere near as cool. Oh wait, I legit forgot about Pizzeria Simulator. Like literally until right now, I did not remember that Pizzeria Simulator existed. Eh, I still say FNAF 3 is my least favorite. At least Pizza Sims got candy. Cadet, candy, candy. Candy. <laughs> On the flip side of that though, now I wanna talk about my favorite FNAF game, Sister Location. This one came out in 2016, it's the fifth game in the main FNAF series, and it's definitely one of the most unique of the series. The game had like a whole year's worth of development time, which is like five in FNAF years. And it shows. It had way more variety, a more cohesive story, a lot more voice acting, some really unexpected funny moments to contrast some of the most tense moments in the series up to that point, and again, I just love these animatronic designs. A lot of the main game is really different compared to the four previous ones. You're not just checking doors and cameras anymore. You're crawling through vents, running maintenance, sneaking around in the dark, and shocking the animatronics. That's probably not a good idea. And I will never forget when I was making my FNAF brief history back on Theorist, and I got totally trolled by the creator of the series into thinking Sister Location was like, canceled or something. Except for the part where none of this was actually true, because if you went to the Game Jolt page for Sister Location MA Night 1, it was sit and survive with a FNAF head. Scott pranked us. He pranked the heck out of us and I fell for it. I legitimately fell for it. That was a really clever prank that really just made my job harder for a couple of days. Plus, I feel like Sister Location went on to inspire a lot of the awesome FNAF VR game Help Wanted with all its different gameplay situations and junk. Actually, hold up. Now that I think about it, these games, these games, they're just mini game compilations. Like seriously, you get thrown into a bunch of individual games that only last like a few minutes. There isn't really a main mechanic or anything. Uh huh. So technically FNAF, FNAF is just WarioWare. Wait, does that make Waluigi the purple guy? <laughs> So by this point, I've made no secret of the fact that I really dig the Five Nights series. The first game is one of the most unique horror games ever made. I have a really special connection with the second game from working on that game theory. FNAF 3 is peepee, -pee, FNAF 4 is decent, Sister Location's the best one, and Pizzeria Simulator... it exists. Oh, and there's a bunch of other ones, I don't know. I also think the lore is super interesting to piece together, even though it's becoming way more bloated than I ever expected. I mean, seriously, there's all these new characters now with their own backstories and a freaking crap ton of books that just keep adding more to it. It's a lot. So much that I literally cannot get into it right now. I'll have to save that for another time. But okay, here's the real confession of this video. I'm a huge fan of Five Nights at Freddy's, but even to this day, I have not actually played 
any of these games. I know, I know. When I said making the FNAF 2 game theory desensitized me to FNAF, I was just talking about watching videos. Actually playing the games, that's a whole other ballpark. The only one I've kind of played is a little bit of sister location, but really only for a few minutes. After that, I got to this part and I just got too scared and I had to quit. After all these years, six freaking years, I am still too nervous to actually play Five Nights at Freddy's. So? Okay, here I am. After all these years, I am about to play the original Five Nights at Freddy's for the very first time. <laughs> I know it says continue on the screen, but that is because I tried it once and I chickened out about five seconds in. Oh boy, oh no. Oh God, just being here immediately makes me feel bad. Okay, I have seen plenty of Let's Plays of this game, so I know more or less uh, yeah, what to expect? <laughs> it doesn't make me not nervous. No one's moving. No one's doing anything. It's making me nervous. Move, do something. Two hours and nothing's happened. This game's easier than I thought. Well, I don't know why I was so scared. It's 3 a.m. and not a gosh dang thing has happened. Is this, is this normal? Is the game broken? Whoa, okay, Chica's out, Chica's out. Okay, it's 3 a.m. Something's happening for once. Just keep an eye on the, okay. Now we're entering the I don't like it part. <laughs> Where's Chica? Where's Chica? Okay, Chica's still there. Bonnie's out, Bonnie's out, Bonnie's out. Oh, oh God, I hate it. Okay, Chica's, Chica's gone. Oh, I, am I a YouTuber now? I'm, uh, I'm playing Five Nights at Freddy's. Am I a YouTuber now? This is bad. This is a bad idea. I'm using so much power. I might be able to make it through the first night. Uh, stop freezing. Oh, the game keeps freezing like that. Okay, back a little bit, but Bonnie's right at the door. Uh, duh, gah, turn over. <laughs> turn over, please. Oh, 4% power. Oh, this is a bad thing. This is a bad thing that's happening. Cheek has gone back. Uh, oh, don't look at me like that. Okay, power's gone. Um, screwed. Ah! Oh God, I knew this was gonna happen, and I just have to accept it. Is it? Turn over, please. Oh, come on, turn over. I was so close. I was so close to getting to the end. I was so close to getting to the end of the first game. Just turn over. Ah! God! <laughs> oh, my first jump scare. I failed the first night. I failed the very first night. Those are eyeballs. Bonnie has moved. Where is Bonnie? Where is Bonnie? Oh no. Oh no, where's ah! <laughs> I ha I have to make it through the first night. I have to. You know what? Screw it. <laughs> yep, yep, that was a good call. Oh, I miss Animal Crossing. <laughs> I don't wanna go back to playing Animal Crossing. It's 4 a.m. There we go, okay, keeping that door closed. All right, yeah, this is, okay, Chica's out. There you are, you're nice, you're still there. <laughs> ah, oh God, oh my God, don't do that. <laughs> Please do not do that again. Oh my God, I hated that. Okay, thank you for at least backing up a little bit. Oh my God, tick over to 5 a.m. Dear God, please, or 6 a.m. Yes! <laughs> oh, no, thank you. No, thank you, no, thank you. Oh, okay. And now I remember why I never actually played those games. It is pure stress. And with one furious video game animal already breathing down my neck, I think I'll stick to enjoying my FNAF content through YouTube for now. So yeah, I know people like to crap on it, but FNAF is pretty important to me and I think it's really cool. Except this, this is against the rules and should go away forever. Personal space, Bonnie!